My name is Kathleen Keneally. I'm so excited to be here with you all today. When we were building Gemma, our North Star, and the thing we were most excited about was building models to accelerate the unbelievable work happening in the open source community. And in the about a year since we first launched Gemma One, I have been absolutely blown away by the incredible research and projects and work that you all have built using Gemma. So I'm particularly delighted to talk to you today about one of my favorite applications of the Gemma models, agents. Before I dive into how you can build agents using Gemma and some of my favorite use cases there, I want to place us in a, with a, in a little bit of context, a very, very brief history of the last couple of years of AI. About 10 to 20 years ago, if you were building an AI application, you were probably mostly using statistics, logic, decision trees, search. That's how many of us here got excited about computer science. And while that was a really interesting time, and there were lots of really interesting algorithmic developments, the power of these systems was very obviously limited. Uh, these AI systems could only reason using algorithms that we had explicitly specified. In other words, they couldn't learn new capabilities or adapt to new tasks in any way. The formal reasoning of these systems was not equivalent to learning. Computers could only solve problems if we explicitly specified the algorithm that they should use to solve that problem. But of course, things have evolved a lot in the, <laughs> since uh, the last, you know, since 20 years ago. About five to 10 years ago, we started to see the emergence of machine learning techniques for AI applications. We were training models, starting to do evaluations. And at this point, we could teach machines to solve problems that we hadn't explicitly specified the solution for. However, we were still missing generally powerful models. About five years ago, I was working, I was personally working on um, AI research for chatbot applications. And we did this by developing about 50 different small models where each one was an expert at a different task. We didn't yet have one model that was capable of generalizing across many tasks. Which brings us to today. When we talk about AI, we mostly talk about LLMs. And we've now finally got models that can learn to reason about and solve new problems without limitations as to what domain they can operate in. These type of models represent a whole new world of AI, where our models are as essential of a tool as the computer itself. So it stands to reason that we can now ask, how might we want to use these new tools? We have generalized intelligence at our fingertips for the first time in history. It seems reasonable that we may want to use these tools to help us solve problems that we encounter in our daily life. We may even want them to interact with tools like we do, reason through new problems and solve them, or even interact with common surfaces like the web. And that's where agents come in. When we talk about an agent, what we mean is agents as applications that use generative AI models to think and act towards goals. They may be able to use tools. They can observe the world and even act upon it based on what they've observed. In other words, an agentic application can take in a goal from the user and reason about how best to achieve this goal, making use of tools and interacting with the world to do so. One of my favorite metaphors for what an AI agent is, is that it's sort of like ordering a hamburger at a restaurant. If you go to a restaurant, you just tell the restaurant what you would like, what your goal is to eat a hamburger. You don't have to specify to the restaurant exactly all of the steps of how to prepare a hamburger. You trust them to take care of it on your behalf. Importantly, the restaurant also has a variety of tools at its disposal. And you as the user don't have to know what the tools are. You don't have to understand how to use them. You can trust the restaurant to know both how to use the tools and the correct order to use the tools to solve this problem. Agents are sort of the same. They have a variety of tools at their disposal, and we want to ensure that they can reason about how to use these tools so you, as the user, don't have to specify how to go accomplish any goal. So what does an agent actually look like in practice? 
Here, we share a standard architecture that you can use to build an agentic application. It has four primary components. The first is the model itself, which we use to come up with a plan for meeting the end user's goal. The model can reason about strategies for achieving the user's goal, often by decomposing the task into subcomponents or subgoals and reflecting to improve the reasoning and strategy that we use to achieve this goal. The second component is the tools themselves, which can be APIs or functions or even other Gen AI models or agents. We then, of course, also have an orchestration component. While an LLM is stateless, an agent needs the ability to remember and maintain state like a human. This state should contain both short-term memory, which may be the actions or thoughts that an agent goes through to answer a single question, um, sort of like the agent's train of thought. And it should also contain long-term memory, which may catalog um, all of the events and dialogue that happen between the user and the agent. Finally, we want a runtime capable of executing all of these components and allowing them to interact with each other. I think it's also important to talk about what is not an agent application. We hear a lot about agents these days, and so it's important to specify really what makes an agentic application different from a typical LLM use case. We have a couple of examples here of standard great ways to use an LLM that are not particularly agentic. And in particular, each of these examples is missing a couple of key elements. The first is that the application doesn't take in a goal from the user, and it doesn't reason about strategies to achieve these goals. These, in these examples, the models are also not interacting with and observing the world. In the second example, we interact with a database, but we don't change anything. We can't act upon that world in any way. And finally, in all of these examples, the model doesn't have access to tools that it can use to change the world around it. But you might be wondering, why, why do we care about this at all? There's been incredible hype around agents. We've heard lots of, of really incredible sources say 2025 is the year of agents. But what does that really mean? Why should we care about agents? And at the end of the day, we care about agents because they bring true value to users. In particular, I want to highlight three key components of agentic applications that are incredibly powerful. The first is that they can be capable of problem solving beyond what a typical LLM is capable of. Agents aren't just smart text generators. They're capable of analyzing situations, using multiple tools, and making informed decisions without constant human input. Second, they're adaptive and self-directed. They can learn from experiences and adjust their approach, becoming more efficient and accurate over time. Finally, agents are capable of tackling complex workflows. They can handle multi-step tasks that some LLMs alone can't manage, like researching a topic, troubleshooting code step by step, or accessing a set of systems by chaining together actions. There have been a couple of recent studies done that really highlight just how much power an agentic application can add to a typical LLM. But there's, in particular, special power about building agents using the Gemma models. Importantly, the Gemma models are best in class for a whole slew of important capabilities. We see here the incredibly high performance of the Gemma models on classic reasoning benchmarks. Reasoning being particularly important for any agentic application. And the Gemma models have this performance at unprecedented scales. This means you can develop powerful agentic applications that are fast and can run on your local device. And finally, because the Gemma models are open weights, you can customize the models to suit your application needs. You can fine tune the models to learn new tools or to improve certain capabilities. I'm so looking forward to seeing what agentic applications you all build using the Gemma models. Thank you so much for your time and attention.